Welcome back to the Leadership Cheat Code, where we unlock the cheat code to effective leadership. My name is Brian Vaughn. Today, we're going to talk about an essential trait for any new leader, courage. As a leader, it is important to have the courage to take risk, to make tough decisions, and inspire your team. I'll share with you five ways a new leader can lead courageously, along with two strategies for each. So let's dive right in. The first way a new leader can lead courageously is by embracing vulnerability. It takes courage to be open, transparent, and authentic with your team. Here are two strategies to help you achieve this. Strategy number one is to encourage open communication. Create an environment where your team feels safe to express their ideas, concerns, and feedback. Foster a culture of trust by actively listening to your team members without judgment. Embracing diverse perspectives and allowing for open dialogue can lead to innovative solutions and a stronger team. So here are three tips to encourage open communication with your team. The first tip is about regular feedback sessions. Schedule regular one-on-ones or team feedback sessions where team members can share their ideas, concerns, and suggestions. These sessions should be conducted in a safe and non-judgmental environment, emphasizing that the purpose is to improve and grow as a team. Encourage everyone to participate and provide their input during these meetings. As a leader, be open to receiving this constructive criticism and demonstrate that feedback is valued and acted upon. Number two is to implement anonymous feedback mechanisms. Sometimes team members may feel hesitant to express their thoughts openly due to fear of repercussions or a perceived lack of anonymity. Implement an anonymous feedback mechanism such as a suggestion box or digital surveys where team members can submit their feedback without revealing their identities. This way, you can gather honest, open feedback and address these issues that might not have been brought up otherwise. And then number three is to promote psychological safety. Psychological safety is crucial for fostering open communication. When team members feel psychologically safe, they are more likely to take risks, to share ideas, and to also admit mistakes without fear of judgment or punishment. As a leader, it is up to you to set the tone by being approachable, supportive, and acknowledging that mistakes are a part of the learning process. Encourage collaboration and avoid blaming individuals for failures. Instead, focus on learning from the experiences and improving together as a team. Strategy number two, and which is a, it's hard for some leaders to do, which is to admit mistakes and to seek feedback. As a leader, it's important to acknowledge when you make a mistake and for you to take responsibility for it. By doing so, you not only show humility, but also create an environment where others feel comfortable admitting their own mistakes. Additionally, actively seek feedback from your team. Encourage them to provide constructive criticism and suggestions for improvement. This demonstrates your willingness to learn and to grow as a leader. So here are three tips to further elaborate on this particular strategy of how to admit your mistakes and also to seek feedback as a leader. Number one is to foster a blame-free culture. To truly encourage open communication and feedback, it's essential to create a blame-free culture within your team or in your organization. When mistakes occur, focus on understanding the root causes rather than assigning blame to specific individuals. By avoiding a punitive approach, team members will feel more comfortable admitting their errors and contributing to the learning-oriented environment. Number two is to lead by example. As a leader, your actions speak louder than words. Sometimes we don't realize this, but our actions speak so much. They communicate so much. When you make a mistake, publicly acknowledge it and discuss the steps you're taking to rectify it. Don't try to hide it. Show your team that you value self-awareness and continuous improvement. By being transparent about your own imperfections, you set the tone for others to do the same and demonstrate that vulnerability is a strength, not a weakness. And number three 
Implement a structured feedback process. Encouraging feedback is important, but to ensure it happens consistently, you need to establish a structured feedback process within your team or organization. This might include regular one-on-one -on -one meetings with team members to discuss challenges and growth opportunities. It could be anonymous feedback surveys, or it could be designated feedback sessions after a significant project or event. Having a formalized process in place ensures that feedback is not an afterthought, but a regular part of your team's culture. The second way a new leader can lead courageously is by embracing change and adaptability. In today's fast paced world, change is inevitable and leaders need to be able to navigate through this change effectively. Let's explore two strategies for embracing change. Strategy number one is to foster a growth mindset. Encourage your team to see change as an opportunity for growth rather than a threat. Emphasize the importance of continuous learning and improvement. As a leader, be open to new ideas and be willing to adapt your strategies based on new information. By fostering a growth mindset, you create a culture that embraces change and encourages innovation. So here are three tips to help you as a leader foster a growth mindset within your team. Number one is to create a safe environment for failure. Encourage your team members to take calculated risk and to step out of their comfort zones. Make it clear that failure is an essential part of the learning process and not something to be ashamed of. When mistakes happen, and they will, focus on the lessons learned and the opportunities for improvement rather than just placing blame. By fostering a safe environment for failure, you will remove the fear of making mistakes and encouraging your team to explore innovative solutions. Number two is to recognize effort and persistence. Acknowledge and celebrate the efforts and persistence of your team members, especially when they face challenges or setbacks. Praise their commitment to continuous learning and improvement, regardless of the immediate outcomes. This positive reinforcement will reinforce the value of a growth mindset, and it will also motivate others to embrace the same attitude toward challenges and change. And number three is to provide opportunities for learning and development. Invest in your team's growth by offering various learning and development opportunities. This could include things like workshops or training sessions or even conferences. Or it could be that you're supporting, you know, furthering their education through a higher education institution. But the purpose is, is for you to encourage your team members to set personal development goals and provide resources to help them achieve those objectives. By investing in their growth, you demonstrate your commitment to their success and you reinforce the importance of continuous learning within the organization. Strategy number two is to effectively communicate the vision and benefits of the change. Most people don't, most leaders don't do that, right? We talk about change and we say, hey, here's what needs to be done. And we run into resistance and people are often resistant to change because they fear the unknown. And as a leader, it is your role to clearly articulate the vision behind the change and explain how it would benefit both the organization and specifically the individuals involved. Address any concerns or questions proactively. Don't react, right? Be proactive. You're going to experience resistance. You're going to experience the fear of the unknown. People are going to, they don't readily accept change. So you have to be proactive. You have to lead them through this process. You have to provide support and resources to help your team navigate through this change successfully. So here are three tips to effectively communicate the vision and the benefits behind the change. Number one is to personalize the message. Tailor your communication to resonate with different individuals or groups within your organization. Acknowledge the diverse perspectives and concerns people may have about the change. You can do this by conducting one-on-ones or small group meetings to discuss the vision and the benefits in detail, addressing specific questions or doubts. Understanding their unique perspectives will help you craft a more compelling and relatable message that speaks directly to their needs and motivates them to embrace the change. Number two is to use stories and examples. Communicate the vision and benefit of the change through real life stories and examples.
Stories are a powerful way of connecting people emotionally and making abstract concepts more tangible. Share success stories from other teams or organizations that have implemented similar changes and the benefits that they reaped. Illustrate the positive outcomes through concrete examples can make the change feel more achievable and less daunting, reducing resistance and encouraging buy-in from your team. And number three is to create a visual representation. Sometimes a visual representation can simplify complex ideas and make them easier to grasp. Consider creating visual aids such as infographics and flowcharts, dashboards, or presentations to illustrate the vision behind the change and the expected benefits. Visuals can enhance understanding and retention, making it easier for your team to grasp the big picture and the steps required to achieve it. It also provides a reference point they can revisit whenever they feel uncertain about the change process. The third way a new leader can lead courageously is by encouraging risk-taking. To drive innovation and growth, leaders need to create an environment where calculated risks are welcome. So let's explore two strategies to encourage risk-taking. Strategy number one is to set clear expectations and provide autonomy. Clearly define the goals and objectives for your team and empower them to make decisions and to take ownership of their work. Give them the freedom to explore new ideas and approaches, even if they come up with some level of risk. When team members understand the boundaries and have the trust and freedom to act, they are more likely to take calculated risk. So here are three tips to effectively set clear expectations with your team and to provide that much needed autonomy. Number one is transparent goal setting. Start by establishing clear and specific goals and objectives for your team. Ensure that these goals are communicated effectively to all team members so everyone knows exactly what is expected of them. Transparency in goal setting helps align the team efforts toward a common purpose and it helps to reduce any misunderstandings or conflicts that could arise from unclear expectations. The majority of you know that I had a, a leader in my life that drilled certain concepts and principles into my, into my head. And one of the things that she said was, expectations are only as effective as they are specific. So specify, give them clarity as to what those goals and objectives are. Allow there to be no hidden agendas. Allow them to walk away with that clarity in mind so that they are able to perform at the level that you expect. Number two, it's to delegate decision making. Trust your team members. Leaders have a hard leaders have hard times doing that. Trusting their team members. But as a leader, if you want to be effective, trust your team members' expertise and judgment. Delegate decision making authority to the team. When team members have the autonomy to make decisions related to their work, they feel more valued and motivated. Encourage them to come up with solutions to challenges and support their decisions even if they may encounter occasional setbacks. It's okay. They may, but what are they going to learn from it? Remember, they're not failures. They are learning opportunities. So what can you take from that situation and apply it going forward to get better? So by allowing them to take ownership of their task, you foster a sense of responsibility and accountability within the team. And number three is to foster a culture of learning. Encourage continuous learning and the exploration of new ideas within your team. Create a safe space. I've talked about it many of times, right? A safe space, psychologically safe space where team members can share their thoughts, ask questions, and experiment with novel approaches without the fear of ridicule or punishment. Recognize and reward the efforts made to learn and grow regardless of the outcome. This approach promotes creativity and innovation, leading to potential breakthroughs and improvements in the team's overall performance. Okay, so now strategy number two is to celebrate and learn from those failures. I just talked about it, right? So it's all about celebrating and learning from the failures. So as a leader, you have to create a culture where failures are seen as opportunities for growth rather than, once again, something that they should be ashamed of. When someone takes a risk and fails, Acknowledge their efforts, provide support, and encourage them to share the lessons learned. That is vital. What did you learn from it and how can we get better? So by celebrating failures, you remove the fear of punishment and you also encourage a culture of innovation and continuous improvement. So here are three tips to celebrate and learn from failures. Number one is failure acknowledgement and support. Encourage open communication about failures by creating a safe space 
for employees to share their experiences. When someone takes a risk and fails, acknowledge their efforts and show genuine appreciation for their initiative. Avoid blaming or shaming the individual for their mistakes. Instead, provide emotional support and assure them that it's okay to stumble sometimes because we all do. You as a leader are going to stumble at times. You need to have humility in that area and also your team needs to know that it is okay to stumble sometimes because this is gonna to help to foster a culture of trust and psychological safety where your staff can feel comfortable taking those calculated risks and pushing boundaries and creation and innovation and thought processes and all those wonderful things that we're looking for them to do. But if we don't create that space, it's not going to happen. And then number two is structured failure reviews. So incorporate regular failure or lessons learned or after action reviews, right? Whichever you would like to call them. But the idea is to implement them on a regular and consistent basis. These type of sessions should be focused on analyzing what went wrong, identifying the root causes, and extracting valuable insights from those experiences. Encourage open discussions during these reviews where team members can share their failures, their challenges, and the lessons that they've learned. Emphasize the importance of taking away actionable insights that can lead to improvements in future endeavors. And number three is rewarding learning and adaptability. While celebrating success is essential, Make sure that you also reward and recognize employees who demonstrate a willingness to learn from their failures and adapt accordingly. This could be in the form of praise, opportunities for skill development, or even promotions. By valuing the process of learning and growth, you incentivize employees to embrace failures as stepping stones to progress, fostering a culture that prioritizes innovation and continuous improvement. The fourth way a new leader can lead courageously is by leading by example getting yourself out there, taking those steps. Once again, I mentioned that your actions speak louder than words. And as a leader, you have the power, you have the touch to inspire others through your behavior. Let's explore two strategies for leading by example. Strategy number one is to demonstrate integrity and accountability. Act with honesty, transparency, and ethical conduct in all your interactions, every setting, everything you do. Make sure you're honest, transparent, and that you are showing ethical behavior. Take responsibility for your actions and for your decisions and hold yourself accountable to the same standards that you expect from your team. When your team sees you leading with integrity, they'll be more likely to do the same. So here are three unique tips for demonstrating integrity and accountability as a leader. Number one is to communicate openly and transparently. Effective communication is crucial for demonstrating integrity and accountability. Heck, effective communication is crucial for anything that you do as a leader. You as a leader need to be transparent about your decisions, your thought processes, and the reasoning behind those decisions, those thought processes. Share both successes and challenges with your team and encourage open dialogue. Trust me, your team can see when you're making mistakes, when you're stumbling, when you're having hard times. So why not just be open about it? You are developing future leaders. Unless you don't see your team that way, then that's another conversation that I may need to have that you need to listen to. You as a leader are developing other leaders. So when your team sees that you are honest and open in your communication, they will feel more value and trust it, leading to a stronger sense of accountability within the group. And number two is to admit and learn from mistakes. Right? This is a big part once again. And as a leader, it is essential to acknowledge that you are not infallible. We all make mistakes. So when you make a mistake, be willing to admit it openly and to take responsibility for the consequences. Avoid making excuses or blaming others. The buck stops with you. You are the leader. Every action that takes place in that team is a reflection of you. The buck stops with you. You have ultimate accountability and responsibility for your team. So instead of making excuses and blaming others, focus on learning from the experience and discussing what can be done differently next time. By showing that you can learn and grow from mistakes, you set a positive example for your team, promoting a culture of continuous improvement and accountability. Number three is to set clear expectations and to follow through. That is essential. A lot of leaders say, hey, here's what I need you to do. 
Here's the task. Here's the projects. But they don't follow through themselves. They don't provide the support. You as a leader need to demonstrate accountability by setting clear expectations for yourself and for your team. Ensure that everyone understands their roles, their responsibilities, and the desired outcomes. Be consistent in holding yourself accountable to those expectations and demonstrate commitment by following through. Following through on your promises and commitments. Do what you say that you're going to do. Vitally important. When your team observes your dedication to fulfilling promises and meeting goals, they will be motivated to do the same, fostering a culture of integrity and accountability within the organization. Strategy number two is to show empathy and support. As a leader, it's important to understand the needs and challenges of your team members. Actively listen to their concerns, provide guidance and support when it is needed. And create an inclusive and supportive environment. That is crucial. The ability to create an inclusive and supportive work environment. Because by doing so, and by demonstrating empathy in that supportive environment, you are fostering a sense of trust and you are creating a culture where team members feel valued and supported. So here are three tips for showing empathy and support as a leader. Number one is to conduct one-on-one -on -one check ins Schedule regular individual meetings with your team members to discuss their professional and personal concerns. We are holistic people. We are not one way outside of work and one way at work. Things that happen at work affect our life. Things that happen personally affect our life. So we are holistic people. So make sure that you're checking in because these types of check-ins allow for you to build a deeper understanding of their challenges, their aspirations, and their overall well-being. Actively listen during these sessions without interrupting, checking your phone, being distracted, because this helps to create a safe space where they feel comfortable sharing their thoughts, their ideas, and their feelings. Use these opportunities to offer guidance, acknowledging their efforts, and to provide constructive feedback if it is necessary. Number two is to empower through flexibility. Recognize that each team member may have unique needs and circumstances. Demonstrate empathy by offering flexible work arrangements whenever possible. That'll take you so far as a leader because the team sees that you are being flexible and adaptable to their needs. This can include options for remote work, which a lot of companies are doing today based upon things that we know happen like COVID. And so that has provided the ability for a lot of companies to allow their employees to work from home or to work remote. So offer that. If you have the ability to offer rem remote work, do so. You could also offer flexible working hours or time off to handle their personal matters. A lot of companies have FMLA that their people can take to deal with those personal matters. So allow them to take that time because by accommodating their individual situations, you show that you value their well-being and foster a sense of trust and loyalty within your team. And number three is to encourage peer support and collaboration. You don't have to be the only person that supports. Your team should be supporting one another. And that is the ability for your team to foster that type of culture of support and camaraderie amongst the team members themselves. Encourage them to share their expertise and skills and experiences with one another. This could be through regular team meetings or cross-functional projects, or it could be through mentorship programs. When team members collaborate and support each other, it creates a positive and uplifting atmosphere where they can learn from one another during these types of challenging situations and times. As a leader, you can facilitate these interactions and celebrate instances of teamwork and support. The fifth and final way a new leader can lead courageously is by staying committed to growth. Leadership is an ongoing journey. You never stop learning. It is an ongoing journey and it requires consistent personal and professional development. So let's explore two strategies to stay committed to your own personal growth and development. Strategy number one is to seek learning opportunities. Actively seek out opportunities for self-improvement, whether it's through workshops or courses or reading books on leadership. Encourage your team members to do the same and to provide resources to support their growth. By continuously learning and growing, you set an example for your team and inspire them to do the same. So here are three tips to seek out learning opportunities for your own self-development. Number one is to create a learning day ritual. Set aside a specific day for that month or that quarter dedicated just to learning and personal development. 
on this particular day. Encourage yourself and your team members to attend things like workshops and webinars or training sessions related to leadership. It could be team building courses that they take, or it could be relevant to an area of skill development. This dedicated time will create a culture of continuous learning within your team, and it'll also provide a structured approach to growth. Number two, start a book club. Book clubs are great. Start a book club for leadership development. Take a book, select whichever book you feel would be impactful to your team. It could be a book on leadership. It can be a book on management. It could be a book on personal development. But take time to read that book together over a certain period of time. Schedule regular meetings to discuss key takeaways or insights. But most importantly, how those concepts that you're learning from that book can be applied to your team's challenges and goals. It's nothing like reading a book, taking a course, going to a conference and learning all of this great information and not considering how you can apply that concept to your overall team's challenges and goals. I mean, that you have to do that. That's the overall purpose of going to those types of conferences and workshops is to take those takeaways and apply it to your team environment. This not only promotes learning, but it also fosters a sense of camaraderie amongst the team members. And number three are skill sharing workshops. Encourage team members to share their expertise and skills with each other through informal workshops or lunch and learn sessions. So for example, if one team member excels at public speaking, they can lead a session to help others improve their presentation skills. By facilitating this knowledge exchange, the team members feel valued for their abilities, their skills, their strengths, and everyone else on the team benefits from a diverse range of learning opportunities that is provided within that team. And strategy number two is to foster a culture of innovation. Encourage your team to think outside of the box, to think creatively. A lot of people like to call it blue sky thinking, right? Whichever terminology you want to put to it, allow them to experiment with new ideas and to embrace creativity. Create channels for sharing innovative solutions and recognize and rewards those who contribute to the growth and development of your team or organization. By fostering a culture of innovation, you create an environment that encourages continuous improvement and adaptability. So here are three tips to foster a culture of innovation within your organization. Number one is to have cross-functional collaboration and idea exchange. Encourage regular interactions and collaboration between different departments and teams within your organization. Break down those silos, break those silos down. If you have those in your organizations, they are not healthy, so break them down and use this as an opportunity for employees from various backgrounds and expertise to come together and exchange ideas. By bringing different perspectives and ideas and knowledge to the table, employees can spark new ideas and innovative solutions. Consider organizing cross-functional brainstorming sessions, workshops, or even informal gatherings to facilitate this type of idea sharing. This will not only lead to the generation of novel concepts, but it will also enhance team cohesion and creativity. And number two, something I've talked about already, but I want to make sure I mention it because it is critical, especially in innovation, which is fail forward and learn from mistakes. This is your job as a leader to promote a culture where failure, once again, is viewed as an opportunity for learning and growth rather than a reason for punishment or shame. You'd be surprised. A lot of leaders do shame their employees. Now, granted, there's consequences if an objective task project is not met but it should never be a punishment or a shaming of that individual. You're going to dish out consequences. I mean, that has to happen. You didn't meet this particular project. What are the consequences for not meeting the project? But do not, once again, I'm going to reiterate, do not punish them and especially do not shame them. But what you should do as a leader instead is to encourage your team to take those calculated risks and experiment with new ideas and products and processes. When failures occur, and they will, we know that they will, you want to make sure that you conduct a lessons learned or an after action review to understand the reasons behind the setback and what you could do to improve. Celebrate the process of trying, even if the outcome wasn't expected, as it contributes to the overall innovative spirit that you are trying to foster within your team. By embracing failure as a part of the learning journey, you create an environment where employees are more willing to take risk and explore unconventional approaches. And number three, it's all about Tofi. You're like, what's Tofi? 
Brian, what is that? TOFI is all about the implementation of time off for innovation. That means you're giving people time off to be creative and to innovate. So give them dedicated time to work on these innovative projects and or to explore their passion projects related to the organizational goals. This could be in the form of TOFI, right? Which is that time off for innovation where employees are given a certain amount of time. It could be a few hours a week or it could be a designated week every quarter to focus solely on innovative endeavors outside of their regular responsibilities. So during this time, employees can explore new ideas. They can conduct research, collaborate with colleagues on projects that align with the organization's objectives. This type of freedom to work on such projects can ignite creativity and lead to breakthrough innovations that may not have emerged during the regular work hours. All right, and there you have it. Five ways, five ways that a new leader and sometimes a tenured leader can courageously lead. Remember, leadership is not always easy. I had a mentor who told me repeatedly, Brian, leadership is not easy ship. And it's not. If it was easy, everybody would do it. But with courage, you can inspire your team, drive positive change, and achieve great success. Thank you for tuning in. And remember, to unlock your leadership effectiveness, you must master the cheat code. See you next time. Oh,